a short trip from the office this week to find out how Precision Micros was working for Tobin's farm. Uh, Paul and Elaine and their son Robert in a farm partnership milking cows since 2019. I was delighted to see the products delivering for them, but also there's a really nice story about the farm um, as Elaine and Kelly will explain. So please listen to the end because I think there's an opportunity for a lot of farms to learn from it. So my name's Elaine, this is Kelly, and we are the female faces of Tobin Farms. And we're on the East Coast, just outside Arco Town. So we have a Jersey Cross cows. We're based in grass and the two lads, Robert and Paul, they do all the main yard work and we manage the, or the baby calves and then we also um, milk on and off during the year to relieve the lads so we're like their relief milkers. Um, well we started dairy farming in 2019 was our first year for calves and before that we used to rear dairy beef calves here. We find the best things for us for calf rearing is drinkers with the compartments not the ones with no compartments because you just cannot tell how much each calf drinks and you need to be sure they're drinking it. We find the shed down here is great. It's really airy, but there's no draft, so they're not cold. It's really fresh. And just, they like the social aspect. So the calves that are in the crates, while they're great, they're a little bit sleepy and a little bit slower to get going. And the minute they go into the pens, it's like you have a different calf. They just wake up. Um, I'm Kelly and I'm here about three years maybe doing calves. Yeah feeding calves and then for the last two years maybe I've been milking so every summer because I'm only finished school last year so I milked all last year and then calving season came along and now I'm full time on the farm now for the rest of the year as I'm off school. The two biggest challenges we had last year were rotavirus and crypto and it was an absolute disaster a nightmare every time we came down here there was one calf sick, then there was five calves sick, then there was 20 calves sick. We were constantly testing them to see what type of scours we had. All the lines were showing up on the tests. We were having to stomach tube them. Some of them ended up in the vets getting drips. It was a nightmare last year. So this year we started off from the start using precision microbes. And last year they were even a lifesaver because they helped us keep the ones who weren't too sick fine. This year, it's been a game changer. So far, we are down to, I think, 25 cows left to calve, and we have had no scour whatsoever. So at the minute, every calf, the minute they're born, they get, when they get their first bottle, which is after the lads have given them three litres in a stomach tube of colostrum, we give them their next bottle when it's due. We give them 30 ml of precision microbes in the bottle. Then every time they get a feed after that for seven days they'll get 30 mil in each feed so we mix it in with the milk for each feed then once their seven days are up they get it every single morning in their drinkers in the individual compartment for five weeks and then once they're five weeks old we stop it. yes i would never ever have calves without having it in the yard from the first day they're born it is the one essential besides their milk a clean bed and a nice place to be you have we have to have it it it's a game changer this year. We've no yeah. sick calves. Their coats are really healthy. The calves are happy. We have no, their appetites are good. It is a game changer. Um, so I come in in the morning and I get milkshake ready, which is our JFC, um, what are they called? Milk cart. Milk cart. Yep. We call it milkshake. We call it milkshake. <laughs> and um, all, our, all our babies are in individual pens, which we had this year as last year they were in a pen but this year it's much handier for us because we can see each calf and how they're drinking and it's not not too much hassle as last year the calves would come over and annoy us and maybe the baby wouldn't get to milk because it's just too hard where now when I'm here by myself in the morning because Elaine goes on the school run um, I can see each calf okay. is getting what milk and I can take my time with it and go along each one and then I come along and then in the morning then they get their tonic down their neck and in their milk. And then I go on to each pens where there's the big girls and they're a little bit handier. And then Elaine comes back and helps us. So talk to me a little bit, uh, Kelly, about your journey into farming. And maybe Elaine, um, you might give some perspective as well of having somebody without farm experience working yeah. in the farm. Yeah. Well, I came from no farm background. Like no one in my family is a farmer, never have been, nothing. No one at all. And I came horse riding with Elaine when I was about four years old and then I became a helper then I said we're the whole way then I came a helper when I was about 12 so 
So I was constantly work, doing lessons and all and helping her out on a Saturday with all the lessons and pony camps and stuff. And then as I got a little bit older and Elaine taught me a little bit more, she allowed me to teach some of the lessons and then I got more into horses as that went on. Then lads roped me into the farm, do a little job here and there. And then calving season came one year. And you'd work experience And I'd school. work experience in school. And I said, Asher, I'll just come down here, do the two weeks work experience. Thinking it was a handy on. number to come here. Yeah. I also fainted the first day because I didn't eat my breakfast. And Paul felt sorry for her, but I wanted to take photographs of her in a yes. heap up there in that pen. So it is a lot <laughs> harder to feed calves than it looks. <laughs> Definitely have your breakfast before you feed calves. Um, then I got over myself and then I kept going. And I've been here since milking, as I said, for the last two years. And yeah, I'm still here. Is there a lesson, yeah. Elaine, for other farms and looking at kind of, you know, as we, one challenge would be people would talk about um, the availability of people, people working yeah. in farms. What's been your experience bringing somebody from a non-farming background into the farm and, you know, how, what's that journey been like? It's been really good because I could see Kelly as she was growing up. So from the time she's here till now, you can see her growing and you could see the interest. So she has the interest in animals. She also wasn't afraid of work. So there was no given, an odd bit of giving out when you'd be asked <laughs> to do something, but nothing really major. And you could see that this was her passion. So when she wanted to do work experience, she did think it was a handy number she was going to have for the week out here from school. But she just, besides the fainting, she just <laughs> took to the animals and the work and it just fitted in. But I think people are inclined to not include women really or younger like girls. And definitely you'd never think of getting someone from the town you just say, oh, they've no idea they're going to be killed on the farm. Like, this is not going to work. But it's worked out really, really well. And we've had loads of young people as helpers who would have been really great on farms. They would have really fitted into it. But they just don't get the opportunity, maybe. And it's hard my age as well, like, as I've got older. Where, like, calving season now, I'm Monday to Sunday, and I get Sunday morning off. Where it's hard because I'm 18 now, people are always like, oh, sure, you should be going out all the time. And, oh, it's Friday now, and here comes the weekend, and all this. Like, and I still go out, and I still get up in the morning, and I still here a couple of minutes late, maybe, sometimes. Mm -hmm, sometimes. But I'm still here around the same time I'm meant to be. But, yeah, some people do say, don't they? Yeah, Asher, that it's you're, not you're a 18 job. now, and Let's you're a girl, party. and you're meant to be out, and let's go partying and all. And I still do. I still have a social life. But I'm also still here then when I'm meant to be here. Okay, what's the ambitions for the farm over the next five, ten years? I think the lads now will answer that better. They have they've all the ambition. I just come along for the ride most of the time. But um I think maybe a few more cows. I'm not sure about more leases, but maybe a few more cows I think is in their big plan. For us, we'll be at this and we'll keep in. the babies coming. We'll keep the babies coming.